Hi, I'm Kartha Gewert, and welcome to Candy Throughout the Decades. My sidekick, Charlie Chaplin, is not here today. He is at an appointment. But that being said, let's start with what candy they ate in the 1800s. Let's start. Hi, and welcome to the 1800s, specifically 1890. Is my... oh. Okay, I'm gonna get thrown away for indecent exposure. Anyways, <laughs> welcome, welcome to our ranch. We are starting out with Nico wafers. This is the original recipe of wafer, the first wafer that Oliver Chase made in order to pioneer America's candy industry. I don't really know what a wafer is, and one of the flavors is clove. They definitely phased the clove out. This is what people were eating. People were like, wow, I can't get enough. Can't get enough, your love, bye. I think I just got clove flavor. Why would you make purple clove flavor? They're so dry. Maybe it's lavender. It's clove. Okay, oh, okay, wait. Let me see what kind of flavors I have. Lemon, live, clove, chocolate. Let's see what the white one is. Licorice? They all kind of taste the same. It's just a hunk of pure sugar. Like this is the kind of thing that you can feel the damage is doing to your teeth. Ew, 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 I hate them. <laughs> oh. When I was younger, my parents got me candy chalk that you could like draw on the sidewalk with and then take a bite out of. Not very sanitary. And this is exactly uh, what it tastes like since 1847. This is like people's idea of candy. This stuff sold like hot cakes. People were obsessed with it. People were like, oh, I traded my horse for some of those original candy wafers. Those are absolutely delectable. I happen to hate them. Cartha Gewert knew that rock candy was old, but not this old. The first time I went to a place called Heritage Park, which kind of focused on the pioneers, in Alberta, Canada, they sold a lot of these things and I never loved them, but isn't she pretty? She's absolutely stunning. You make a solution in a glass of water that's mostly sugar, you put the stick in and this just makes itself. So very cheap thing to make. And if these were popular back in the day, you could have made a killing because that the costs for this must have been low. Whoa, well, your mouth's so green already. Really? <gasps> Okay, well, it just tastes like sugar. Oh my goodness. Okay. It looks like I just made out with Shrek. So obviously the candy in the 1800s was a little bit dry and somebody came to our lovely North American shore to mix things up a little bit. Look no further than the Germans. What is that, the bread pretzel? This is the HK Anderson peanut butter filled pretzel nuggets. Now that looks fun to eat. The other two that we had before were like very, you know, sweet. This is a good mix of sweet and salty. These guys knew what they were talking about, or did they? Let's try some. Mm. Ooh, that tickles my fancy. There's a pilgrim on an iPhone. This is part of what started the tradition of the American pretzel snack. Like these things have history. A rich, peanut buttery, salty, crispy. Oh. What were you talking about? Huh? Huh? Okay. Hi kids. This is the last one of 1890. The Reed's Peppermint Roll. These came in a few flavors, including root beer, peppermint, cinnamon. I guess people just really like their peppermints. And uh, this is something that I've never really understood. I like the combination of chocolate and peppermint, but just a peppermint? Do you think that people realized back in these days that like how badly this would hurt your teeth? I was expecting a scotch mint, but it's like a hard candy, like a hard sugar candy. Now these were very popular and they still exist to this day, 2020, so maybe they're good. It's just a peppermint. It just tastes like those peppermints you get when you eat at a restaurant and there's like mints on the billfold. That's exactly this. Some things never change. Definitely peppermint has not changed. The interesting thing about peppermints is it really seems like it's going to freshen your breath, but I find that the combination of sugar and peppermint makes your breath worse, like over time, unless you're chewing one all day, in which case you'll rot your teeth. I don't think it's gonna help. So I don't really know what the use is for these. I don't like them. We've moved from 1890 to the 1900s and uh... <gasps> My shoulders are out. I don't know if this was appropriate at that time, but it's what we're going with. The most interesting thing about these different candies through the decades is the gimmicks start showing up. And these wax sticks are definitely an example of that. These feel very, very waxy. 
I don't know if I like that. If I take a bite out of this, it's just gonna come right out. You don't unwrap them or anything? They're just- No, you take a bite and you suck it down with grandpa on the porch. What the heck? Uh-huh. It's liquid inside. It tastes like Kool-Aid. There's like liquid Kool-Aid in here. If I was a kid, I would have loved this. It's a hit of sugar. Ooh. Very, very sweet. Red tastes how you assume it would, kind of like cherry-ish. I really want to taste this blue because blue is my favorite color of candy. It really squirts when you bite it. Don't you dare. Said, Don't you dare. <laughs> oh! It is so sweet. If you want to taste this, make some jello. Don't put it in the fridge and just drink the water. Because that's this. Oh man, dentists must have had a field day back then. Like an actual field day. And the problem with this is that the dentist uh, used really crazy tools. Like even when my dad was a kid, he was scared of the dentist. So I can't imagine what a cavity would have done to you back then. Ew. Ooh, uh, uh. What does blue taste like? It tastes like blue. Okay. Blue tastes like blue, red tastes like red. Like it just tastes exactly how you would assume, like very artificial and very sweet, like pure Kool-Aid in these wax sticks. Like it's just water in here. It's just marketing. You know what I mean? Ooh, look at the colorful sticks. <laughs> The food coloring, yes. Well, we've got a lot of them now. Yeah, we do. Oh my goodness. You could only buy it in bulk. It was cheap, but like, I don't know who's gonna eat those sticks. Like maybe when next Halloween comes around, I could be like, hey, you want some sticks? It's the year 1900. The Americans had a say, the Germans had a say, and now the British want some. This is made with natural colors and flavors, but this very much reminds me of like those things that grannies have like in a bowl at their house that nobody ever wants to eat. Those are pretty good. Not bad. Pretty good indeed. Which one are you going for? I'm going for the purple, the purple nurple. Hmm, I was expecting it to be bad, but it's very good. So they say that the kids and the adults like this. It tastes like, like a little ball of hardened icing. And when you bite it, it kind of like explodes in your mouth. I can't explain what the flavor is. There's spirulina in this? Hmm? Definitely a altered recipe from the original. It has gotta be. Spirulina, wow. Fancy. I like how it says one pound on it. It just feels very authentic. I feel like this one's gonna be root beer flavored. Try that. It's like chocolate. This one tastes like a Tootsie Roll. All of these have very different flavors to each other, whereas a lot of the candies we ate previously all kind of tasted the same. There's a sugar-coated one too. It looks like a little jelly tot. And it tastes exactly how you assume it would taste. It's like melt in your mouthy candy in here and then there's just like a little jelly snack in case you get sick of the rest. The British just popped off. Let's see if they're gonna do it again. These are Taverner's Great British Sweets. These look like the original like wine gums made in 1900. Ooh. Look at this little picture on the back with these two kids and their dog. Like that's how it makes you feel like it's a family owned business. Shall we eat their gums? And like all of the different gums kind of have like a different shape, like a phone booth, like a soldier guy, like, you know, the guys that wear the hats. The thing that's really interesting to me about these gums is that there are white ones. I'm always interested in white flavored gums because I feel like it tastes like berry ice. That just might be my 2020 flavor palette speaking. Actually my 90s flavor palette. Oh girl. Oh, the British make you fight for it. Oh, it's a crown. Tastes exactly like a wine gum. It's really good. My British friends love them so much, so I like taught myself how to like them. I did the same thing with salted licorice. Really good. <laughs> We're all done with the 1900s. 1910 now. It's 1910, and what do you get if you mix graham cracker, marshmallow, and chocolate together? Moon pies! I did not know that these dated back to 1917. People were just trying to be inventive. People were trying to like set their product apart. There's the chocolate one and there's the vanilla one. And I've actually never eaten one of these before, but it looks like a stack of pancakes. It kind of has like a Krispy Kreme donut, like outer layer on it. That looks like it's gonna melt. I assume that's marshmallow in the middle. This is a very hearty, dense snack. Mmm, God. Whoa. It's like Krispy Kreme, but better. It's like biting into a fat stack of pancakes. Man, the moon pie person must have made an absolute killing. Like imagine there's just like hard candy and like that rock candy on a stick. And then you're like, guess what? I'm actually gonna die. <laughs> so much sugar. 
<laughs> but like we can assume the chocolate one's probably pretty good. It has like the same icing top that the vanilla one has and it, they are much better than I thought they would be, but I'm biased because I like anything with graham cracker in it. Mm. Gorgeous. I'm literally gonna have like a hangover from the sugar. So I'm trying to drink water, but we're still in the 1910s, okay? We have moon pies, very imaginative, inventive. These guys are taking the old fashioned route. And I think that that's why these guys aren't in every single gas station that I come by. This is old fashioned hard candies by Clay's, candies since 1919. And I thought this was funny because one is root beer. I didn't know root beer as a flavor had been around for so long. The other is sassafras, which I don't know what that is, but that just seems like a very old fashioned word. It's like, pass me that sassafras candy. Oh, geez. Oh my goodness, okay. Oh, I mean, I guess, like these guys meant it when they said hard candies. That is a hard candy. Usually when I see a sugar coating like this, I assume it's gonna be very sour, so it's very strange that it's not sour. Definitely tastes like root beer though. Just be eating this thing forever. I don't like that. I like gummy candy, cause it's like you eat it, then you eat another one, but this thing just sits in your mouth. The sugar just sits in your mouth. You know when in the morning you have really bad breath? It's because like your mouth, your saliva gets a little bit more acidic overnight. It becomes a breeding ground for bacteria and that's why you get bad breath, I think. This stuff is like, ugh. The idea of like something sitting in my mouth for this long, just like marinating in my spit, like it makes me wanna gag. I'm gonna try sassafras. Oh my God. Come out cuties. Ah, there she is, that's sassafras. And I'm gonna eat one of these here sassafras candies and try to look up what sassafras is, cause I don't know. I like how it says in the packaging here, like, if you like our root beer flavor, oh my goodness, you will love sassafras. It looks like a herb of some sort. It's a leaf, but there's also fruit. The dangers of sassafras, okay bud, like, let's stop. Like, it tastes like a car that's been sitting for too long and like hasn't been cleaned in a very long time and like just is starting to smell stale. Like this tastes stale. <laughs> When the old fashioned candy, <clears throat> okay, I can't even look at it. When that came through, when I first licked it, I was like, mm, I wish it was sour. Like it looks like it has a sour coating. And I feel like these guys in the 1910s, Charms, they were like, you know what? Sour, good idea. So these are sour candy balls. I have a feeling that they're gonna be rock hard, but I can live with it if it's sour. Like there's gotta be something fun about it. And sour is very fun to me. So this better be like really sour, but I don't know if like, the people in the 1910s like really knew how sour we like it. That is not sour at all. It's like a jawbreaker, you know? Where's the sour? This is as sour as original chicken flavor ramen is spicy. It like tingles the tongue a little bit, but not enough for me to go Ooh! and have a good time with it. The packaging, I will say of everything is getting a little bit better, but I wanna be impressed. Apparently every few seconds, a walnut whiff is eaten in the UK. I don't know if that's true or if their marketing team just made that up because I've never heard of a walnut whiff before, but it does look different. Okay, I'm gonna like break all of my nail polish off trying to get into these candies. Oh, okay. She thick. Damn boy, he thick. The center looks very marshmallowy. It's too chocolatey and too marshmallowy. Ooh. Ooh. If I was a kid, I'd really like, I'd go for that, but like, ugh. Carla Gouer is too old for that. Like just like the pure marshmallow fluff. Ooh, that's some nice chocolate though, I will say. I'm so done with 1910, 1920, here we go. This gold mine gum is the number one selling gold nugget gum, which I mean, how many gold nugget gums are there? <laughs> But apparently this is very nostalgic. And a lot of parents like to get their kids to try it because apparently it is the finest tasting gum there ever was. And you can already tell like, we're getting kind of gimmicky here. Like the gimmicks are coming through. Capitalism is like having a field day. It's like, how can I dress up this gum to look really unique? In the 1920s, we ate gum out of our burlap sacks. What say you? Some of these are bigger than others. Mm. It tastes like banana, like artificial banana, those banana marshmallows. This was fun because like the sugar coating is really thick, it disintegrates, so you like keep wanting to like put more gum in your mouth. Like you wanna eat like a whole mouthful of this. If I had nostalgia towards this, I would definitely get it for my kids and I'd brush their teeth 
very, very vigorously after. My issue with this gum is it's not the kind of gum you can blow bubbles with. It's more like, you know, like that chewy, like kind of low quality gum. It's good though. Here we have the 1925 Sherbet Fountain. It's a stick of licorice that you dip into a fizzy sherbet drink. Or is it a drink? I don't know, it's candy, but like this is very, it's supposed to be a fun and interactive experience. Twist to open. Hmm. Oh, okay. So it's just powder and then you suck the licorice. Sour enough for you? Oh, honey, that's not sour. That's bad. <laughs> the powder is so fine that it goes right in your throat. I'm not really tasting like the, the, the sherbet, the sherbet. It just tastes like sugar. Sugar. Actually, no, I taste it. The licorice kind of interferes with the taste of the powder. So like when you get a lot of powder and you kind of lick it off without getting too much licorice, you do taste it, but this is not my cup of tea. Ooh, like just the idea that you're gonna be sucking on this thing all day and then putting it back in and then like taking it out later and then the powder gets all like in the, oh gosh, ugh. People really weren't scared of their own bodily fluids back in these days. But that, I mean, I will say very inventive. The taste, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would really like this, but like the powdered sugar, it is so fine. Oh, this is like the European like calorie count thing and I don't know how to read this. I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of sugar in here. This is a Charleston Chew. I feel like a lot of you have had one of these before because I've had one of these before. They are still very popular, but I've never actually noticed that it says on the bar, try it frozen. Cause this is a nougat treat. Like if you bite it, it's like really just like nice chocolatey, like nougat. But the crack, the Charleston crack is supposed to be like a, when it's frozen, it's supposed to be like part of enjoying this here bar. I really do enjoy it though. If you like nougat and you like chocolate, this is your bar. Nougat, nougat, nougat. The first time I had one of these, I was like a little kid, like grade five maybe going to an ESO. And my friend like, got one and I was like, this is like the ugliest packaging ever. Why would you get one of these? But then I tried it and I really liked it. Like it tastes like, like a brownie and hot chocolate like mixed together. It's like the perfect chocolate hit and the bar is so good that you get so much of it. There are certain things that are as old as time and Carthage Gewirt would know that Sugar Daddy's is definitely not an exception to that rule. Sugar Daddy is slow cooked caramel. It's apparently one of the most popular retro treats. I don't know if it's that popular because of the taste or if it's because of the name. Like, ha ha, got you a sugar daddy. You wanted one, ha ha ha. I guess we'll see. It's wrapped in wax paper. So the wax paper comes off really easily and it doesn't stick to the caramel, but this is quite the hit of caramel. I feel like some of the wax from the wax paper has kind of like left a bit of residue on the sugar daddy, but the sugar daddy by any other name would be just as sweet. It's a rock. Ah! I'm not gonna sit here sucking on a sugar daddy. Like that's not happening. That's caramel cooked for a very long time. Corn syrup, sugar, whole milk, whey and natural and artificial flavors and salt. Yeah, it's just slightly salted caramel. Caramel by itself, just, it's just caramel. You know what I mean? I like fudge. Caramel though, it's just like, it's not as fun. You can't bite this thing. I don't like it. Abba Zabba, you my only friend. One won't do, better buy two. This is a taffy candy bar with apparently a sweet creamy center. I'm pretty sure it's peanut butter. I, oh, wow, this is stunning. She's clean. All right, I'm gonna take a bite like in the middle cause I can see like the peanut butter sticking out. I don't love taffy, but seems popular. Oh, it's soft. Mm. The taffy appears to be a delivery device for the very, very creamy peanut butter. It's like the taffy keeps the peanut butter on the inside safe. Ugh. I can see why its popularity has declined because it's just not really groundbreaking. I'd rather eat like a, you know, a, a crunchy salted pretzel with peanut butter in the center than like white flavorless sugar taffy with peanut butter on the outside. What do you think? 
I don't know. I didn't expect it to just legit just be peanut butter. And then, yeah, like, right? There's just, it's just, it's weird. Some crazy man made that. Candy comes in all different sorts of shapes and variations, but have you ever heard of the chocolate broom? It's a broom. Why? I don't know. I picture myself in the 1920s being like, oh, I could really use a sweet. My husband being like, here, honey, a broom. Ha ha ha. Got him. It's just really musty old dark chocolate with a marshmallow center. I would not be surprised if this was like one of the remaining brooms from 1920. In 1925, you wanted to go see a movie, perhaps a drive-in movie. I don't know when those started, but goobers were always there. I feel like maybe calling your chocolate goobers isn't the way to go. It's not the play, but they're still here. They still be making them, so hopefully the goobers taste better than they sound. It's a milk chocolate candy with dry roasted peanuts. Oh, so it's like a glossette, but not the raisin, the peanut. It's a glossette. It's all right. If you like peanuts, I don't. Next decade. Welcome to 1930 and guess what we have? Nerds! Made after the candy king himself, Willy Wonka. These are Delicious, hopefully they remain as delicious as they were when I was a kid. Share the love, pull the tab here. Oh girl, so fun. You pull the little slide, like do you want gotta have grape or do you want seriously strawberry? Or do you want both? Or do you want both? Oh, only if you're being naughty that night. This is just cool, smart packaging. The nerds come out, yes, they are little sugar bombs, but they have such strong flavor. They're so sour sweet they wake you up like i don't know how these little guys like pack such a punch no artificial flavors then what did you put in here you idiots how do you get this kind of flavor with dextrose sugar malic acid corn syrup natural flavors carnauba wax oh there's carmine in this hmm. well nerds 1930 this is when the candy really starts to bang you know what i'm saying in the 1920s we had an understanding that goobers didn't go over very well so bunch of crunch actually became synonymous with movies back then i don't know if that's crunch bars or actually bunch of crunch this and the silver screen go hand in hand and we all know how crunch tastes like we know it's gonna be good and we all know anything's better than a chocolate covered peanut to be honest oh these are like little guys look at that look like little poops it's good, it's standard, it's not too surprising, and tastes kind of old. We had sweet candy, sour candy, entering the scene now is the spicy candy, like the red hot, the candy heart kind of inspired candy, cinnamon flavor. These little guys are, I mean, we've all had these, right? Just didn't know they were around for that long, but it makes sense that they were. According to this journey is like one of the oldest flavors, cinnamon, root beer, mint. These are rock hard, I hate them. But like, if you like cinnamon and like this is your deal, this is good. And if you want to have it in your mouth forever, it takes a while for this in the melt. The Love Hearts Candy Roll. Tell someone you love them today. Candy is for lovers. We're trying to inject candy into every fiber of your being so that you spend your money on our candy. Mm -mm -mm. How do you open these things? They look disgusting. Apparently Terry really likes them. Delicious. How? It just looks like powder. Oh look, talking about my girl, my girl. Ooh. It tastes like rockets. I don't like rockets. Wait, let me. I can't with this. Excuse me while I spit this out. Ugh. Any dry candy, I just can't stand. I'm gonna have a butter rum lifesaver while Terry eats that. Butter rum, they wouldn't come out with that flavor today. Not for kids, but back in the day, anything goes. Humans like to test each other. We were just testing our limits in the old candy sphere for a very long time. Butter rum. Mm. Butter rum? Never had it, but it sounds good. That's just butterscotch. That's all it is. I like it though. I don't think you gave the love hearts enough. Enough time chew. to marinate? Mm -hmm. I just can't. I took a bite out of it and like the powder like, exploded in my mouth and like I hated it. I never liked rockets though. Yeah, but they don't taste like rockets, which are smarties to people in the US. Really? Yeah. Smarties? Come on, guys. <laughs> 1940! Yeah! Candy lips! What? Wax lips? Whatever for? That is so silly. And they sold these for money? <laughs> and they smell good. Like a candle. All right, this is what I'd look like with lip filler. What do you think? Pretty good, actually. Oh, I'm cool. Can you eat these? I think so. 
I'm not sure if you can. I guess if they're made out of wax and you're not supposed to. I mean, I think you could, but this is like the wax wrapping around a baby bell. I'm sure it is technically edible and non-toxic, but I have no interest in eating this, but it does smell good. Fun dips, woo! People really liked to dip sticks in sugar for a really long time, and like this is just one of those things. I remember getting these when I was little and just kind of like, just getting the most insane sugar rush ever. You know, a stick that I was sucking on all day and then keep dipping it in sugar and then go back to it the next day. Ugh. Not for me these days, but I do enjoy how easy and accessible this is to rip. You gotta like get it a little wet and dip it in here. I feel like when I was a kid, it was more about like the gimmick and the experience of eating the candy more than it was about how the candy actually tasted. It's just sugar and artificial flavor. It doesn't taste that good, but like the way you eat it was like very fun and appealing to me. You know how they say like fashion is a feeling? I feel like to a kid, who's like very imaginative. This is a really fun way to consume sugar. Wow! <laughs> you know, <Just> my sticks. <laughs> thrills, I've never had Thrills gum before. Why does it say it still tastes like soap? Like did this prepare the kids who wanted to cuss for their moms washing their mouths out with soap? It says that it's rose water flavor, but they, they need to assure you on the packaging. Listen kids, it still tastes like soap. You're gonna love it. It's not kidding. <laughs> No, that's not kidding. Oh, I can smell it. Right? <sighs> like, why buy a candle for the house when I could just chew some of this and go, ha! <sighs> Ew! Who does that? Yeah. Ew! These came out around this time. Cheesies. Ew! So bad! I hate cheesies! Oh! York mints? I actually really like these, but like I don't I don't think I can stomach it right now. We know what they taste like, they're really delicious. It's like an after eight. I just like, I'm sorry, but that's soap. Nah. Nah. Nah 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 nah. Imagine like being born in this time and being like eating your soap and then being like <gasps> Next decade? Yes. 1950. Baby. Marilyn Monroe. Let's do it. Try to do my hair like her. Does not look like it. And look at the back, like, hi. <laughs> The Popeye sticks in 1950. Popeye, popular cartoon. The packaging has not changed. Essentially, they're just like these little things and I used to like kind of, you know, pretend I was <laughs> smoking <laughs> with these things. And then my mom kind of shelved them because they have uh, swine gelatin in them. But I did really enjoy the taste, even though it kind of has that like chalky, sugary kind of taste that like a lot of these old candies have. Like I did find that they tasted quite good. You want one? Yeah. I remember being like Ow. quite, yeah, they hurt. <laughs> I remember being quite distraught um, when my mom was like, no, you can't eat Popeye sticks anymore. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> really liked them though. Pink snowballs. These are like marshmallows with like a pastry coating dipped in pink coconut. This woman, Mrs. Freshly's, like she was really grinding in the 1950s. Like she's got so many different kinds of like little desserts. These are cream filled cakes. I, I can already tell by the way these look that like they're very beautiful, but I already know I'm not gonna like them because like marshmallow filling is just, it's, oh wow. Oh, it's just a bit much for me. The marshmallow is actually on the outside and this looks like a sponge, like sponge cake. It's like really squishy and like fun to touch and play with and it's pink, which is like a huge plus. And honestly, I like Mrs. Freshly's like grind and initiative. Like I like how she was like, you know what? I'm getting into the candy cane too. And there's nothing you boys can do about it. Hopefully she actually exists. Cause if not, then my dreams are over. Garbage candy, yeah. It's a fun way to eat candy, candy in the trash can. Nothing like teaching your kids that eating out of the trash is exactly what you want to do. Maybe like a marketing ploy to be like, if you can't hide it, highlight it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when your parents are like, stop eating that garbage candy, you're like, aha, it really is garbage, haha. <laughs> this was like priming kids to learn sarcasm. Oh, okay, interesting. Fish and bones. Yeah, fish and bones, like little fish skeletons and bones. Mm. They're, oh, there's mm. shoes. <laughs> They really stuck to their uh, plan. Like, well, these kids, they like to eat garbage. We'll give them garbage. Mm. It tastes like Pez, but like more sour. And I liked Pez a lot. But the reason why I liked Pez 
And why I would have liked it better than this is because of the dispenser, like raising the head and then a little Pez comes out. It's a lot more fun than eating out of the trash. This is a very, very big pixie stick inspired by Willy Wonka. I never liked pixie sticks. I feel like if I was a parent, I'd be like, yo, you have to get like the academic excellence award for one of these pops because you're going to be bouncing off the walls for hours. And we wonder why like we had sugar addictions for so long. Peach, that's good. That's real good. I like that. Oh, Mrs. Freshly, she's popping off. These are buddy bars, peanut butter wafer bars. I told you, Mrs. Freshly was like, I'm gonna make a name for myself. The 1950s Marilyn Monroe, get out of the way. This is it right here. Wow. Look at these, these are huge. The value you get. Wait, like, is that three or is it? Yeah. Oh. Why buy a chocolate bar when you can just get a Mrs. Freshly's? Ooh, it melts in your hands. I don't like that about it. It's a giant wafer bar with peanut butter. Gigantic. I've had enough peanut butter and sugar for one day. <laughs> so that was candy throughout the decades from 1890 to 1950. And next time, if you guys want to see it next time, I really want to do 1960 to 2020. The candy gets like very interesting, just kind of like way more over the top and it's like funny to see our interests change and the marketing ploys evolve. I just think that the history of candy is so interesting because this is like what we did for recreation. What brings people together more than like candy? Especially kids, you know, like on the playground, like if I had Dunkaroos, everyone else wanted some and like if a girl had nerds, everyone would go ask her for some. Just candy's like a really fun, weird, addictive thing that kids like to partake in. <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see me again, make sure you hit push notifications and I, Kartha Gewert, will see you on the next one. Bye!